prior to coming to your transplant evaluation, you have had some medical management locally. Either your primary care doctor or your gastroenterologist has been medically managing you. Either you've had some problems with fluid, as you heard before. You've had problems with your mental confusion, the encephalopathy that was mentioned earlier, or maybe with fluid issues. Uh, you have fluid in your belly called ascites, or you may have fluid in your lower extremities, in your legs, that can be very problematic. We want to help you to bridge the gap between you're coming here for evaluation and the time of a liver transplant offer. So today we're going to talk with you about how we bridge that gap and get you towards liver transplant listing. A liver transplant is a surgery used to replace your diseased liver with a new liver. Some of you may think we're going to take out part of your liver and maybe leave part of your liver, which is not the case. We're going to take out your entire liver and there's a couple of different sources that are used to obtain a liver for you. Livers come from two sources, either a deceased donor or a live donor liver transplant, which you'll hear about in a little bit. A deceased donor transplant are not all the same. There are donors that have been declared brain dead. In other words, they have had an accident or a um, illness, such as a trauma, they've fallen, hit their head, they've had a stroke, and they have been declared, or they have been declared dead after their heart has stopped. This is also known as donation after cardiac death. So the first situation, a standard criteria donor, is a type of a donor that anyone could accept. This is someone that is usually declared brain dead. This is someone that has been perfectly healthy for the most part for their entire lives. It's often someone that could be on the younger side. And this would be an organ that someone could take and do very well after. This is an organ that anyone could accept. Donation after cardiac death is a little bit different. You may have been in a situation where a loved one has been on life support, or you have witnessed this in a friend or a family member, and they have been declared not to be able to survive this accident or illness. And unfortunately, the physicians who are caring for this, your loved one, have told you that there is no hope for this person to survive this accident or illness. And what happens is the family of this potential organ donor has made the decision that the life support will be removed. And when the life support has been removed and this patient passes away, their heart will stop, they will stop breathing, this could be a potential organ offer for you. What happens in this situation is if the organ donor does not pass away in the expected period of time, and that could be from anywhere from a few minutes to up to a half an hour possibly, that organ may not be suitable for you. And the reason for that is because blood and oxygen are not circulating through that organ and it may take a while to work when it is implanted into you. That cannot happen as the liver is the only organ that you have that is a liver and that has to work immediately. This is different with other types of organs. Going back for just a minute to the uh, brain dead um, donor, which is a standard criteria donor as well, just to make sure that you understand, a person that has been declared brain dead, there's a, a medical um, way that a person is declared brain dead, and that is using radiographic imaging to determine if there's blood thro flow throughout the brain and also it has to be done on two separate occasions. So it is a bit of a process. However, when we call you for an organ offer, we will tell you a little bit about that organ. We cannot divulge a lot of information about the potential donor as it is an anonymous de a decision that someone makes to donate. However, that we can give you a little bit of information about this potential organ. The last category, public health service increased risk, is a little bit confusing to some people, and it may be something you've never heard of before. There are donors out there that have had in their history some type of increased risk. This can result in the use of an organ, however, you are notified and given information about this potential increased risk. An example would be someone that has passed away after a drug overdose. You're probably aware that there are many people in our part of the country and throughout the United States that have a significant opioid dependence and have passed away from an overdose of drugs. We utilize these types of organs very often. 
Most of these organs come to us, oftentimes they are a younger person. They could be someone that has used drugs once. It could be someone that's used drugs multiple times. However, keep in mind that all the testing that you've had done, the blood testing you've had done today, is going to be done on your donor. So before we even notify you that you have a potential organ offer, all of this information is going to be obtained. Is this information 100% guaranteed against increased risk? It is not. However, our biggest worry is that you will get sicker and it may be difficult to get you to liver transplant. We are much less worried about the transmission of disease because of these blood tests which are extremely sensitive. They can, de they can determine if someone has been exposed to a virus or an, a cancer, for example, within three weeks of their passing away. So you can see that there would be very low risk. It's not zero, but a very low risk of, of developing a viral transmission of disease to you. The things people often worry about is hepatitis C and HIV, for example. Living donors are donors who come forward to donate part of their liver. They can be related or unrelated. And this is a, uh, something that you are going to hear about a little in just a few minutes. However, um, we will not consider living donation for you until you have been approved for listing for liver transplant.